my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So I love talking about fabrics and patterns. I love sharing the things that I've been making. I also do a weekly um, Sunday sewing catch up where I share all of the things that I've been feeling inspired by um, from the sewing community. Um, so if those things sound really interesting to you, then please do make sure that you've hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. I try as much as possible to publish a video every Sunday and that's my Sunday sewing catch up. And then um, in the week, I also try and publish a different sewing blog, whether that's a makes video, a fabric and pattern haul, um, it might be uh, my top five like t-shirt patterns or dress patterns or it might just be a roundup of one pattern and all the garments that I've sewn making that pattern. Um, so as I said, if those things sound interesting to you, then please do make sure you hit that subscribe button. Today's video is my long overdue June makes video. So I'm going to be sharing all of the things that I got sewn up in the month of June, which seems like ages ago now. Um, so today is the 31st of July. So I am rounding up last month's and then very soon I'm going to be rounding up July's makes. Um, I am really excited to share with you all of the things that got sewn up in June. I had to go back um, in my notebook. I always write down when I've sewn something and I'll put it underneath that month. So for June, I've got a list of all the things that I've sewn. For July, I've got a separate page in my notebook where I'll write down all the things that I've sewn. And then I've already, um, I've got my August page ready because I've got a couple of projects cut out that I know that I'll get sewn up. So it's always really fun going back and having a look and reminding myself of all of the things that I got sewn up. And I've, I've got quite a few favourite, I mean I say this every time, but I've got quite a few favourite dresses within my June makes. So before I get started with what I sewed up in June, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. Um, I've shared this over on my Instagram page already, I did a little reel video of my sky dresses. But this is the latest pattern by Tilly and the Buttons and it is the sky sundress. There are three different um, skirt options and I will talk about this pattern in more detail in my July makes because I've made three of them. Um, and then I've also done a hack of this too, which I'm going to talk more about over on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, I do share a lot more of my sewing um, before I film these videos. So I am at the baker that sews over on Instagram. Um, so this is the knee length version and it's in this gorgeous, this is a Pigeon Wishes fabric and I can't remember where I got this from. I either got it from Hey So Sister or So Me Sunshine because they both stocked it. Um, but yeah, it's an empire line bodice and then it's just got a gathered skirt. Um, it has got pockets and then yeah, I've just got the knee length version. So there are my knees and that's where it ends up. Really lovely and floaty and really roomy. It's so perfect for when the weather's really warm, which it is today. The other thing to say is I added some waist ties. So I've just sewn them in. Um, I'll talk about how I do them in a second, but yeah, they're just in the side seams because I wanted to add the option to be able to just add a bit of shaping in the back and then it also creates this cute little bow. I've probably tied that really badly, um, but a really cute little bow in the back and it just it just brings it in ever so slightly because I was a bit worried about it being really um, sort of floaty and quite loose on my frame. So the way that I sew my um, ties into the side seams, because a couple of people have asked me this. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to come a bit closer, but yeah. So I have just used, there's a pattern piece that comes with this pattern. So with the pattern, you can do these um, cute little ties. They're faux ties, so they have no purpose really apart from just to look pretty. So I use the pattern piece for the ties because they're the perfect length to do ties to create the bow at the back. And then what I did, I don't want to knock the camera, um, what I did was I sewed them, so I made them up as ties, and then when I'd constructed the skirt piece, I stitched them on the top of the skirt piece here before I attached the bodice, so then they're sandwiched within the skirt and the bodice, and they just match up with the side seam that runs all the way down. So that's how I add in, that's how I tend to add in my waist ties, and I've done the same for any of my Lyra dresses that I've added waist ties into. Hope that makes sense and I hope that was helpful to you. So that is what I am wearing. I'm not going to go into detail about this dress because I'll share more about that pattern in my July makes because like I said I made quite a few of them. So let me have a look at my list. Um, it will come as no surprise if you followed me for a while to know that I made an awful lot of dresses in June. So I made two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh seven dresses. 
Um, I made some Yanta overalls, I made a t-shirt uh, and a jumpsuit and a pair of trousers. Oh, I didn't get the trousers out actually. I will get them to share with you because I made some Portobello trousers, which is a Nina Lee pattern, which I absolutely adore, but I made the pattern up in corduroy. So um, I had to make some amendments to the pattern, but when I get to that, I'll talk about that. So I'm going to get changed into the first dress and I made two versions of this pattern. Um, it's a pattern that I absolutely love. You'll probably be able to guess before I get changed into that pattern. But it is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress. So I'm just going to pop the first one on and then I'll come back and talk to you about both of the dresses. Okay, I have got changed into my first Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress. Um, I made two different variations on the pattern. Um, this is in this amazing space print fabric that I got from DIY or Die Leeds. They were having a massive sale because they were closing temporarily. And I just love it. It's got space, um, like space themed, like rockets and planets and stars and all sorts all over it. The children at school absolutely love it when I wear this dress. And I am um, really enjoying making things that the children are going to love at school. Um, so I've just ordered some Very Hungry Caterpillar jersey spandex um, fabric that I got from First for Fabrics. The lovely Tamlin shared it with me. Uh, fell in love with it and I've ordered some of that and then there's also some rainbow cloud jersey spandex fabric which reminds me of Care Bears I don't know if you know the Care Bears I grew up watching that and I used to have in my bedroom when I was a child Care Bears curtains and I had Care Bears bedding and a Care Bears cushion too so it really took me back to being um, a child with all the Care Bears things in my bedroom. Um, I'll put some images in of the jersey fabric so you can see what they look like and I'll link them down below too because they are absolutely beautiful. Um, so I am really enjoying making things that I know that the children are going to love and also match whatever I'm teaching at school as well. It's really fun. It's one of the benefits actually of um, making your own clothes. You can theme your outfits or I can theme my outfits um, for work, um, which is also one of the benefits of working with four and five year olds. It's always really fun being able to wear things like this. Um, I would wear this out and about with my family as well, actually, because I just absolutely love it. I love this colour and I love all the different colours that are in the pattern too. So this is the um, Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress. There are different skirt lengths and there are different sleeve options too. So with the Lyra shirt dress pattern, it does come in their extended size range um, sizes. So it's a UK 6 to 34 and that's split into two size ranges. So the first one is a UK 6 to 24 and then the second size range is a UK 16 to 34. So in terms of sizes, for a UK 6, it's a bust measurement 30 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and then hip measurement 33 inches and then for a UK 34 it's a 56 inch high bust, 60 inch bust, 53 inch waist and 61 inch hip measurement. Um, let me show you the different length options that you get. So it comes with this gorgeous collar as well and then you've got a button placket down the front. Um, so these are the line drawings so you can add a tier on to make it maxi. Um, well, it's not maxi actually, they call it midi length, sorry. Um, or you can just do a gathered skirt which stops at your knee. And then you've got two different sleeve options. So you've got the short sleeve and then you've got the long sleeve. Um, and the long sleeve gathers into elastic. I'm yet to do a version with the long sleeves because I tend to roll my sleeves up, especially when I'm at work or even when I'm at home actually. I tend to just shove my sleeves up ever so slightly. So I haven't done the long sleeve version because I just, I think I end up trying to, um, push them up um, so I just don't see the point in doing that version I absolutely love both versions and actually there's an option to do a belt so what I tend to do instead of doing a belt is I just put on um, waist ties um, in the side seams like I talked about when I did my Lyra uh, not Lyra my sky dress um, so in terms of fabric suggestions they recommend a light to medium weight woven fabrics like a cotton lawn voile seersucker chambray double gauze, viscose, tensile, or a lighter weight needle cord. And I have got plans to do a needle cord version in the autumn winter. Um, although the weather at the moment, it's turned really cold and rainy. Um, so I could do it now, actually. I feel like we've missed the summer. Um, we keep having really bonkers days where the sun will shine for like an hour and then it absolutely chucks it down and then the sun came, comes back out. We've had lots of rainbows as well and it's been quite windy. Anyway. I'm really enjoying wearing the Lyra shirt dress. Um, it is a ultra cool shirt dress, which is slightly oversized. It's got a blousy bodice with bust starts, 
button front opening, two piece collar and stand, and then also um, side seam pockets. The instructions are really simple to follow. There are lots of blogs over on Talina Button's website and they've done lots of little video clips as well just to give you some tutorials and help along the way. Um, I found inserting the collar quite straightforward. Um, one of the suggestions in the um, when you're cutting it out is that you cut the collar, one of the collar pieces on the bias. Um, now sometimes I've done that and sometimes when I haven't had enough fabric I haven't cut it on the bias um, because that just requires a bit of pattern Tetris. Um, and I want to try and save as much fabric as possible. I don't really like having lots of odd random bits of fabric that are, um, you know, off cuts. So wherever possible, I will try and just use as much fabric as I can um, without wasting too much, if that makes sense. So I would say um, when I've um, not cut the collar on the bias, it hasn't actually made a huge amount of difference to the sewing. I've still managed to put my collar in really nicely. Um, I've used lots and lots of pins, lots and lots of clips lots of pressing um, and just being really slow with that aspect of sewing but as usual Tilly and the Buttons instructions are really straightforward and they really hold your hand throughout the whole process and um, with all of my makes I will put images in as well because it's really difficult for you to see the full length especially when it's a midi length dress um, I've used some gorgeous buttons from um, Pigeon Wishes shop. I couldn't remember where they were from then. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them. If you can't see them properly, I'll put an image in of what they look like. Um, but I think that they just go really nicely with all the planets. So if I undo my ties for now, you'll be able to see that the button placket goes all the way down to here. This is where the first skirt is attached. Um, and then I have got the skirt that's got the ruffle on the bottom. I've got my, my um, ties in the side seams. And then I tend to just wrap them ever so slightly round and then tie them at the front. And that just brings in that skirt here. And then if I stand up, you'll be able to see the length of the skirt. Um, I love sort of how full that skirt is at the bottom. And then it's got the pockets in the side seams too. Um, I love this version. I love how swishy it feels. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It just feels really lovely to wear. Um, and then that's what the back looks like too. Um, this is a cotton poplin and I love working with cotton poplin because it behaves itself. It presses really nicely too and because it's a cotton fabric it's quite breathable as well. Um, this is, um, I think it's described as a quilting cotton and I would say it works really nicely for the Lyra. It meant that I've got really accurate sewing with my collar as well and it just presses really beautifully. Now what I tend to do with my Lyra shirt dresses is I don't fasten them all the way up here. I just find that quite uncomfortable. So I tend to have them open. I have got a buttonhole all the way up and I've got buttons all the way up too, but I just tend to prefer to have it open like that. So that is the first one. I'm gonna get changed into the second one, which is actually in a very similar color of fabric, but I went for the knee length skirt. So I'm just gonna pop that one on so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so this is my second version of the Lyra. So I went for the knee length skirt. If I stand up, you'll be able to see. So it just stops above my knee. Um, I've got the ties. I haven't fastened them yet because I just wanted to show you them. But yeah, they're just um, sewn into the side seams again. Um, I've got pockets and you can see, because I haven't fastened it, you can see actually how roomy it is, um, which is lovely, especially on a hot day. It feels really nice and roomy and breathable. So I tend to just fasten my ties and bring them around the front again, just to bring it in ever so slightly, um, just like that. I love this fabric. This fabric is from Studio Jepson, the lovely Faye. Um, if I don't think she's got any left, but if she has, I'll link it down below. Otherwise, I'll just link her shop because she's got the most gorgeous fabrics and her patterns are amazing, too. So if you haven't checked her out, do go and check her out because she sells the most beautiful fabrics. I've bought quite a few fabrics from Faye now and they're always really good quality. Um, fantastic service, really speedy um, postage as well. You always get a lovely little handwritten note from Faye too, which is always such a lovely touch. So thank you, Faye. Um, I adore this fabric. It's like a marble print. Again, it's a cotton poplin. So it meant it was really beautiful to work with and it pressed beautifully, especially when I was doing the placket and also the collar. For the buttons for this version, they're these gorgeous, I think they're called Dalmatian buttons um, from Ethel and Joan. And they came in a So Hayley Jane box. 
Um, I'll link them down below if I can find them over on the Ethel and Joan website, but they're absolutely gorgeous and they just go really nicely with this fabric. I absolutely love this version. I love the fabric. I think it's just so beautiful. Um, you've got the collar and again, I just tend to wear it ever so slightly open and then the buttons going all the way down. I've done the short sleeves um, and then I've got the pockets and then, yeah, this is just the short version um, or the knee length version. I've already shown you the length, but yeah, you can see it just sits above my knees um, and I've worn this to work and it's perfect. I love the fact that it's got pockets um and yeah it's just really comfortable and really nice i really enjoyed making i've enjoyed making all of my lyra shirt dresses i really enjoy the process it feels slightly more challenging because you've got the two-piece collar and stand and the button placket and the button holes um but because the instructions are written so brilliantly it doesn't feel like you're scratching your head at any point and there are so many amazing tutorials out there to help you with anything as well if you get stuck so those were the first two things that I got sewn in June. And again, all of these makes are not really in any particular order other than what I've written down in my notebook. So I'm going to get changed into the next pattern. And I've made three versions of this pattern because I just fell in love with it and absolutely loved the process of sewing it. So I'll get changed into the first version for you. OK, I have got changed into my next outfit and the next thing that I got sewn up. And this is the Friday Pattern Company Davenport dress. Um, it's got some really gorgeous features, which I'll talk about when I share the pattern. But I really love the gathering that you get here from the elastic that you insert here. It's just beautiful. I love the sleeves, although the sleeves are originally slightly longer. But I've just made them ever so slightly shorter just because I prefer to have my sleeves above the elbow. Anyway, this is the pattern. It's the Friday Pattern Company Davenport dress. The lovely Emma, um, who is So Do It Emma over on Instagram, um, shared first shared this pattern. That's where I saw it. She's made some beautiful versions, so do go and check her out. Um, she's got a YouTube channel too, so I'll link that down below if you don't follow her already. Um, so the Davenport dress, if I show you some line drawings, um, is quite a loose fitted dress, but you bring it in with this drawstring across the waist. It's got this beautiful yoke detail on the shoulders here, and then you've got this lovely gathering along the neckline, and that's um, there's like a little elastic casing there it's such a clever design um, and then you've got elastic on the end of the sleeve to create this lovely um, sort of ruffly effect and then on the back you've got another yoke and then you've got this gorgeous like you probably can't see it with this fabric because this fabric's quite busy but this really cute like ruffle in the shoulder it's so beautiful and then there's also a ruffle on the bottom and I would say you do need that ruffle on the bottom because it's quite short without it although you could just in extend this skirt pattern piece it comes in sizes extra small to 7X. So if I just find the um, size chart for you. So for an extra small, it's a bust measurement 32 to 33 inches, waist measurement 24 to 25 inches, and then hip measurement 34 to 35 inches. And then for a 7X, it's a bust measurement 59 to 60 inches, waist measurement 52 to 53 inches, and then hip measurement 62 to 63 inches. It's a pullover dress. Um, with a slightly loose fit that then's brought in at the waist with that drawstring that which I talk about and I'll show you that in a second when I stand up. Um, the pattern was drafted using sample measurements for a height of five foot six um, and then the straight sizes extra small to extra extra large are designed for a B C cup size and then the plus size is 1x to 7x is designed off a block with a CD cup size. In terms of fabric recommendations for the Davenport, they recommend woven fabrics. It's suitable for light to midweight fabrics like a cotton lawn or a linen, which makes it a great, a great dress for spring and summer. And then if you want it a bit fancier, it can be sewn from like a silk or something with a bit of drape. And one of my versions I've used a sateen and it does feel slightly more sort of dressy in comparison to the other versions that I've sewn. So this is a viscose twill. It's quite a lightweight viscose twill that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. And it's got this gorgeous like blue ditzy um, floral print all over it. I absolutely love it. So if I stand up, I'll show you what it looks like. So I did make slightly shorter sleeve length. So it just stops here, but you still get that gorgeous billowy effect from the sleeves and then you also get this gorgeous little ruffle which is created by the elastic channel I don't know if you're going to be able to see that um but yeah you get like a ruffly effect there um and then you've got this elastic channel here um which is sewn into the front piece before you attach the yoke and then you've got yoke pieces here you get this gorgeous like um 
ruffly effect here. It's really beautiful, gathered effect, not ruffly effect. And then you've got this lovely ruffle into the shoulder and that goes all the way around the back. And then you've also got that yoke piece here. Um, and then you've got a drawstring casing and then you use the same fabric that you've sewn the dress up in to create your little drawstring. And then that goes across. So it is quite roomy, but then you use your drawstring um, to pull it in ever so slightly um, to what you want it to be pulled in to. And then you just fasten that up. And then it's also got pockets just here, which are really lovely, nice and deep pockets. Um, and then this is the length. So this is where the first piece, pattern piece finishes. If I tuck up that, so it stops above the knee, um, which for me feels too short. So I would always add that ruffle. And then the ruffle, it sort of makes it a midi length. Um, so yeah, it sort of stops about here. So it makes it midi length. Um, it's got gorgeous swishability because of that lovely ruffle on the bottom, which I absolutely love. And this is what the back looks like. So you've got that casing, which brings it in ever so slightly, still quite roomy. And then you've got that um, yoke piece and then it's sort of gathered into the yoke piece too. It's a really lovely construction. I love Friday Pattern Company's instructions. They hold your hand and there's lots of lovely pictures to help you along the way, if I show you. Um, it's broken down into really clear steps and I really love that. Um, so this is how you construct that front piece with the elastic channel. It's a really clever construction, but you get lots and lots of pictures along the way to really hold your hand. And each step is really broken down, which I really like, um, all the way through. There's just loads and loads of really clear instructions, which is great. There are lots and lots of pattern pieces to, just to say with this pattern. There you go, you can see all of them here. There's lots and lots of pattern pieces. Um, but like I said, they really hold your hand and the instructions are really broken down um, and you get lots of clear drawings to help you along the way too. So I loved my first version so much that I ended up making two more versions. So I'm just going to get changed into the second one to show you. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, this is my next version. So I did everything exactly the same. So you've got that lovely elastic channel here, which creates those gorgeous gathers. This is a viscose fabric that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. I love it. It's got green background. And then it's got all these gorgeous little flowers, which are white, but then they've got pink dots in. So you get this really lovely, like soft pink effect against the green. It's really pretty. Um, so that's the fabric. And then I've done the shorter sleeves. So you still get that lovely billowiness. Um, and then I've got the ruffle in the shoulder. Um, the drawstring across the tummy and then that creates gathers on the skirt as well as here as well and then you've got the pockets and then I have added the um, ruffle I've done the ruffle on all of my versions just because I prefer the length of that ruffle and that skirt um, and that's what it looks like again really 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 swishy which I absolutely love um, and then this is what the back looks like too I will put pictures in of me wearing those because it's quite difficult to see but you've got that rough, that gathered bit into the yoke as well on the back, which I absolutely love. Um, and then I made another version, which I'll pop on in a second, but just to show you again some of the features of the pattern. So the sleeves are slightly longer. I think they stop just beyond your elbow, but I prefer to make them shorter and I just use the length and shorter nine on the pattern piece. Um, you've got this gathering here, which is created by an elastic channel, and then the yoke piece is here, and the ruffle is inserted between, it's sandwiched between the shoulder and the sleeve, um, and that's a really cute feature. And then on the back, you've got this yoke, and then you've got the gathers here, and then when I take, oh, actually, I'll show you on the blue one, but the sleeve has got an elastic casing, which creates this gorgeous ruffling. Drawstring across the tummy, and then the ruffle on the bottom. So if I show you with my blue version... Uh, where are the sleeves? I took it off in a hurry. So if I show you with my blue version, this is what the cuff looks like. You get that gorgeous gathering. It reminds me a little bit of the um, Nina Lee Bakerloo blouse and dress where you get that gorgeous ruffle detail because you've got that elastic channel. It's just a really cute feature. And then it also creates that volume with the sleeve as well. And then this is the ruffle detail in the shoulder. It's just so pretty. 
um, and then the back you've got that yoke piece and then again this fabric's really busy so you can't really see but it's gathered um, I just love it I think it's absolutely gorgeous these two versions I've worn to work and then I've got another version which I'm going to pop on which I've kept for like when I go out for dinner um, with family or friends because it just feels slightly fancier because it's a sateen so I'll just get changed into that version for you so this is my third version of the Davenport dress all the same features you've got that elastic here and this is a beautiful sateen fabric that came in a fabric godmother dream wardrobe box so I've done the short sleeves again just love this fabric because it's a sateen it just feels really lovely and silky and really lightweight it's absolutely gorgeous if i come closer you can see it's in my favorite color green and then it's got these like pink i think they're flowers pink flowers all over it it's so lovely to wear and um, i've done exactly the same as my other two versions you've got the drawstring you've got the pockets i mean look look at that skirt it's just gorgeous i love how it moves um and then yeah i've got the ruffle on the bottom love how swishy it is and it goes all the way around um yeah it feels much more um i guess dressier this version because of the sateen it's just really lovely um and silky and just really soft and lightweight um and i adore this fabric so i absolutely love the davenport dress i must have i must love it because i've made three versions and i've definitely got more versions that i am planning um, I just think it's such a versatile dress. It's really comfortable. Um, one thing that I really love about it is it's really roomy and quite blousy, which helps around my tummy area, which is um, a part of my body that fluctuates weekly. Um, I mean, even daily. It depends on the food that I've been eating um, and just generally how I'm feeling um, because I have um, IBS, which means that my tummy can bloat quite often. You know in the afternoon i'll be a different size to what i was in the morning so things like this that you can just pull on and adjust the size of it throughout the day really suit me um and this dress because it's got some really cute features like that gathering here and that ruffle and those gorgeous sleeves and the uh, i mean i love a ruffle on the bottom of a, a skirt anyway or the bottom of a dress um it just makes it feel ever so slightly um fancier and just a lovely dress to throw on um, while still feeling quite casual and I've just paired it with like my converse and my trainers when I've gone to work or some flat pumps that I've got and then when I've gone out um, for dinner I've popped on some sandals to just feel a little bit smarter um, so yeah I'm really really pleased with all of my Davenport dresses and I can definitely see myself making plenty more um, I might try the, the slightly longer sleeves especially when I'm thinking about dresses for the autumn because dresses are my favorite thing to pop on um, and even when the weather's cooler I'll just pop on some tights or some leggings so I might make some with slightly longer sleeves um, just to see how I get on with them um, and to keep me nice and warm when the weather gets cold I am going to get changed into my next make and I'm sticking with Friday Passion Company um, patterns because I love them um, and you can probably guess again what pattern I'm going to pop on so I'm just going to get changed okay i have got changed into my next make so like i said i'm sticking with the friday pattern company um, and it is the westcliff dress which is also one of my firm favorite dress patterns i absolutely love it it's definitely like secret pajamas whilst making you still feel really good about yourself it's such a beautiful dress pattern really straightforward to put together most of it can be sewn on your overlocker if you've got one um, and then just use top stitching and your hemming using your regular machine um, I have made, I've lost count of how many versions I've made of this pattern, but I absolutely adore it. I actually made one in July, which I'll be talking about in my July makes video. Um, it is a stylish and comfortable knit dress. It features a faux wrap front and an A-line skirt, and then there's an option for a gathered lower tier, which I have added onto this dress. Um, the pattern includes a simple tie belt, but I've gone with my usual addition of um, ties just in the side seams. Um, it's perfect for everyday wear, but you can also dress it up um, for any occasion. It comes in sizes extra small to 4X. So for an extra small, it's a bust measurement 32 to 33 inches, waist measurement 24 to 25 inches, and a hip measurement 34 to 35 inches. And then for a 4X, it's 53 to 54 inch bust, 46 to 47 inch waist, and 56 to 57 inch hip measurement. Um, I have got plans to sew up a few more versions. I've ordered the fabric that I was talking about, the spandex fabric, that's the Very Hungry Caterpillar. 
I'm hoping to use that fabric to turn it into a Westcliff dress, um, but I'll share that in my August makes if I do get that sewn up in time. In terms of fabric, it's perfect for knit fabrics of all kinds. Within the booklet, you get a stretch um, sort of uh, stretch guide, stretch percentage guide, so you can check if that fabric is the right stretch for your Westcliff dress. You need at least 25% stretch and if you choose a um, stretch fabric with more body like a ponty it will have a slightly more structured modern look but if you sew it in a drapey knit like a, a viscose jersey which is what i've sewn it in it has a more romantic look i absolutely love how this dress makes me feel it's in two of my favorite colors blue and green um it's got this gorgeous leaf print all over it this fabric is from simi sunshine i'm not sure if they've got any of this left but if they have i'll link it down below for you I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like. Um, so let me stand up so you can see the length. So this has got the extra tier on the bottom, which makes it maxi length on me. I did actually have to take about two inches off the bottom um, tier because it was just touching the floor. Um, it's got so much movement and bounce to it. And that's because of the viscose jersey. Love that print. I think it's fantastic. Um, so I have got waist ties just again stitched into the side seams where the bodice and the skirt meet um for the bodice it is a faux wrap which is sewn together you base it together so you don't wrap it with the ties it's a faux wrap and then you make up the bodice make up the skirt and then attach them together and that's how i've sandwiched in the waist ties it's got this binding all the way along the edge of the neckline and that goes all the way into here and all the way around your neckline and then down onto the inside as well where you've got a wrap piece here. I won't show you because I'll expose myself. It's got this really gorgeous yoke piece. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but there's a yoke piece here. And then it creates these tiny little gathers that you just get there. And then you've also got the same on the other side too. Um, short sleeves, um, really comfortable. And then, yeah, I've just got the ties. And what I tend to do is just bring them round and then tie them at the front. So yeah, you can do a belt. So I just used the belt pattern piece and then just created two ties and then sandwiched them in. And the reason I've done that is because I worry that I'll lose a belt. So I like to have whatever it is that I'm gonna use as a tie just attached to my garment because I worry that, that I'll end up losing the belt when I take it off um, or it'll end up falling off. So I just feel more, more secure putting in ties. Um, the Friday Pattern Company instructions, as always, are really straightforward. They really hold your hand. Um, there are lots and lots of images to help you as well. And the steps are really broken down, which I really love. Um, and it's really, really clear what you need to do for each step, um, which really helps. I love having the drawings because it really helps you. These are the little um, sort of motivational cartoony pictures um, within the instructions and this just says you're doing great um, they make me smile when I'm sewing up Friday Pattern Company um, patterns so I would highly recommend the Westcliff dress oh it also comes in this knee length version and you just do that by not adding that um, lower tier and I have made a version a lemon print version which is knee length and that's perfect for the summer as well I'll pop an image in of what my lemon print dress looks like and I'll also pop an image in of me wearing this dress so you can see what it looks like on me too because um, it's quite difficult to show you properly how it looks. Um, but I love this. I've worn it loads already. I haven't worn this to work because I just worry about the children stepping on the bottom tier. But I have worn it out with family and I've worn it out to dinner as well. And it's so comfortable, really comfortable around my tummy area as well, which is great. And because it's knit fabric, it's actually really easy to fit it to your body. Um, right, I'm going to get changed into my next make, which is some overalls. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, my next make is a pattern which I have admired for ages. I've seen so many beautiful versions over on Instagram. Um, and I have toyed with whether I actually needed another dungaree pattern, because I've got quite a few dungaree patterns. One of my favourite dungaree patterns to sew up is the Waves and Wild Heyday dungarees, and I've made quite a few versions of those. I love how loose and relaxed fit they are. Um, but I, I think maybe Helen's Closet had a sale on or something, but I decided to buy this pattern because I've loved so many versions and it is the Yanta overalls by Helen's Closet patterns. Um, so this is what they look like. There's an option to do the full length or you can do a shorts version. Um, it comes in sizes 0 to 30 and it's described as an intermediate pattern. 
Um, so these are the views. There's view A and view B, depending. I'm sorry, the um, pictures aren't very clear because I've got lines across where I've printed it. Um, but yeah, this is the dungaree version and then this is the shorts version. And then you've got patch pockets on the front, patch pockets on the bottom, and then you've also got bib pocket as well. Pockets are optional, but I always go for pockets. Um, in terms of the size measurements for a zero, it's a high bust 29 inches, full bust 31 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and hip measurement 33 inches. And then for a 30, it's a 54 inch high bust, 56 inch full bust, 48 inch waist and a 58 inch hip measurement. Um, my size measurements are a 34 inch bust, a 27 inch waist and a 35 inch hip, which put me in the um, size six. So for a size six, it's 32 inch high bust, 34 inch full bust, 27 inch waist and then 36 inch hip. So it was only my hip measurement that was ever so slightly out. Um, and then there is an option to do a side zip if you need it. And then what they recommend you do is baste um, the pattern together and then try it on to see if you need a zip. Because quite often you don't need a zip. And I found um, sewing up my measurements, there's enough give in the pattern for me not to need a zip. So I just thought I'd share what my measurements are because I thought that might be helpful for you um, in terms of working out um, sort of sizes and things. They were pretty accurate going off my size measurements and in terms of how they fit and it's been drafted for a five foot six per five it's been drafted for someone that's five foot six inches tall uh, with a b cup bust in terms of fabric recommendations they recommend medium to heavyweight woven fabrics like a cotton twill a denim up to 10 ounces linen corduroy and canvas crisp lightweight fabrics like a cotton and lightweight linen can also be used for warmer weather overalls um, use more drapey fabrics like a tensile twill, wool crepe or linen viscose slub if you want to experiment with a softer, less structured look. So I went for a corduroy and I got this amazing corduroy. It's described as an olive colour um, from Hey So Sister and it's just gorgeous. It's got leopard print all over it and it's got like black outline leopard print and then it's got pale pink within the leopard print spot. They're a laid back artistic style overalls with a comfortable fit through the waist, hips and legs. They've got the classic features like the V-shaped back and then the pointed chest pocket. So you can just see that V-shaped back and then the pointed chest pocket. And the answers are secured using buttons. So I did change it and I used um, dungaree clips because I didn't want to use buttons. They were really straightforward to do. Um, just sewed it up exactly the same, but I just added the dungaree fastenings instead. Um, make your Yanta overalls cropped or summery shorts and both views have front and back patch pockets. They're comfortable, modern and fun to sew. And Helen's closet instructions are impeccable. They really hold your hand every step of the way. I just finished sewing up the Helen's closet Reynolds dress, which is their new pattern. And again, it was an absolute breeze to sew because the instructions were just so straightforward. And you get lots and lots of images as well to help you along the way. What I also really love about their instructions is you get lots of top tips. So within it, it'll be um, one of the instructions. It says stay stitch along the curved edge of the front and back facings. Repeat for the overall front and back. And then there's just a little circle here that says what is stay stitching. And it just gives you a bit of an insight into what that actually means. So if you're really new to sewing and you're not quite sure what all of the, the language means within the sewing patterns, it's really handy that you've got that information, that extra information along the way. So you come across that. Um, wording and on the same page you've got a little bit of um, information about what that actually means. They also include the sewing glossary but I just find it really helpful to have that extra information within the page where that word is being used so really really lovely touch. Lots of fantastic illustrations um, and close-ups for any tricky points as well which I also really really love. So if I stand up, I'll show you what mine look like. So the only change I made was to um, use dungaree buckles there. Let me just fasten that back up. I went for the bib pocket on the front here. Lots and lots of top stitching. So just a heads up, if you're not a fan of top stitching, there is lots and lots of top stitching. I find it quite relaxing and quite therapeutic, so I didn't mind too much. Um, and then I've got the patch pockets on the front and then patch pockets on my bottom too. Um, in terms of length, I'm five foot five and a half, so not too off the measurements for who the pattern, like the height that the pattern's drafted for. And they stop just at my ankle, which I think is the perfect length. Um, I absolutely love them. 
they're so comfortable um there's still quite a lot of ease within them so i really really didn't need the um i'm just showing you the ease for the pattern i really didn't need to insert the zip along the side either and i know quite often i think that's quite common that people don't need to use the zip um for the side seam um which is great if you can avoid having to put in a zip um they're really fun they've just got the yanta overalls paired with my tabitha t-shirt and this tabitha t-shirt's in this um uv activated jersey fabric that i got from like so amazing so it looks like it's just got clouds all over it but when you go out in the sun it activates the light within it like there's colors i don't know if that makes any sense but when you go out in the sunshine basically little rainbows and raindrops and clouds appear um and they sort of it adds colour to the t-shirt basically it's really fun it's quite magic when i wear it to school the children absolutely love it because when i'm inside it just looks like a regular t-shirt with clouds on but when i go outside lovely colourful rainbows and raindrops and things start to appear um it's a little bit of magic for when i'm at school um i'm gonna get changed into the next thing that i made which is another jumpsuit so i'll be back in a second Okay, this is my next make, which I absolutely love. It really makes me smile. It is quite similar, actually, in detail to, well, there's parts that are similar to the um, Davenport dress, as in the elastic across the, the neckline, and a little bit like the sleeves too, only they're finished ever so slightly different. Um, this is a pattern that I've had on my Make 9, and the reason it's been on my Make 9 for this year is because I've had this pattern for over a year, loved it when i first saw it still love it now absolutely love it now that i've made it up but it's just taken me so long to sew it up i think because i get distracted sometimes by new patterns or ideas that i get um because i've been inspired by something um an example would be so what i tend to do is i'll start my month with a few ideas of things that i want to get sewn up whether that's something i've seen a new pattern that i've got an old pattern that i've wanted to sew up for ages or it might be a new pattern release that I've got distracted by, or I've seen a gap in my wardrobe. Those tend to be the reasons why I sew. Plus, it's just really fun, and I really enjoy sewing. Um, there's a challenge over on Instagram at the moment. I think today might be the last day, because I think it's a real day today, um, called hashtag sew recreate the look. And it's by Charlene and Jen. Um, and the idea behind the challenge is that you recreate a look that you've been inspired by. Now, I didn't think I'd have enough time to um, join in with this challenge because school was really, really busy. I haven't really had the time to sort of think about what's been inspiring me. Um, but I recently made a dress, the simplicity dress, actually, that's behind me. Um, this gorgeous maxi version. I made it for a friend's daughter. And then when I made it for my friend's daughter, my girls um, found, like, saw the dress and absolutely loved it. So they picked some fabric from my stash and I've sewn it for them got some really gorgeous features to it like this beautiful um elastic casing along the back that fastens into a beautiful bow if i can i'll put an image in of what it looks like um and that just got me really inspired to try and make one for myself so i can match my girls because it doesn't come in adult sizes it stops at age 14. so i had to look at some patterns that i've got in my stash and i've managed to hack it to create a dress um an adult version for myself so i can match my girls now that is a plan that I didn't have in the pipeline at all, but sometimes I just get that creative um, inspiration and I really just have to go with it. So when I'm doing my make nines, it's the first year that I've joined in. Um, I don't think I'll probably do it next year and moving forward, just because I know that having nine firm plans, although if you look at my make nine, I had two plans that were question marks. Um, I don't like having a really specific list of things that I have to get ticked off. Um, I like going with um, things that inspire me or things that I'm excited to sew. And I do feel sometimes when I've got a specific list of things that I need to get done, it can almost hold me back. It's like if I've got, um, you know, somebody's asked me to make something for them. I don't often sew for other people, but I do like to be able to help out if I can. Um, I almost feel a pressure so if I've decided to make something for somebody, um, take for example, I made some duffel coats at Christmas. They were gifts, nobody asked me to do them. I really wanted to sew them um, for a family friend and also for my nephew. Um, but it almost, by putting, not putting pressure on myself, but almost by, I don't know, um, giving myself that 
that task of making that thing almost stops me from doing it, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but anyway, that's what I found with my Make 9 this year, that I'm not looking at it really. Um, it's there at the back of my mind, but there are other things that I'd much rather be sewing. Having said that, I've sewn up the Avenir jumpsuit now and I absolutely love it. That was a really long-winded sort of um, explanation around my Make 9 and this jumpsuit, so apologies. I'm looking at the time, it's like four minutes of me rambling about that. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd let you know that that is how my mind works sometimes and I don't like having those time pressures. Um, totally put on by myself, but anyway. This is the Avenir jumpsuit. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly, but I hope you can see how it's spelled at the bottom. So apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, it's by Friday Pattern Company. I adore their patterns. Their instructions are always brilliant and they really hold your hand. This is described as an easy pattern and it's for woven fabrics and it comes in sizes extra small to 4X. For an extra small, it's a 32 to 33 inch bust measurement. 24 to 25 inch waist measurement and 34 to 35 inch hip measurement. And then for a 4X, it's a 53 to 54 inch bust measurement, 46 to 47 inch waist measurement and 56 to 57 inch hip measurement. Um, it's an easy to sew jumpsuit with billowy sleeves and it has got billowy sleeves, wide legs. Um, it has got pockets um, and it says that it will have you breezing into any event, looking good and feeling fine. Elastic gathers the neckline and the waistline and it also gathers the um, sleeve here too. The Avenir jumpsuit is designed for woven fabrics. It's got an easy, comfortable fit, um, but it would work in a stable knit fabric too, but I haven't tried it in a stable knit fabric. Um, you're going to want to choose a fabric that feels good on your skin as it covers most of your body, and you'll get a different look depending on the type of fabric you select. So it looks really good in linen, ray and chalice, um, wovens with a bit of drape. And they recommend that you avoid anything that's too stiff or heavy because it'll make the jumpsuit quite bulky. Um, and they encourage us to be creative and daring with fabric. So I have gone quite daring with this fabric. It is a viscose chalice, which is a slightly lighter weight of viscose. And I got this from Rainbow Fabrics. And for once, I've actually stuck with what I wanted to make with a certain fabric. So what I tend to do with my fabrics is I have an idea. I go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I'm going to make that. And then I get distracted and I end up turning it into something else. But anyway, I said when I shared this fabric that I was going to make this jumpsuit. And I'm really pleased that I did because I think it works really well. Um, it's got these gorgeous leaf print and flowers all over it. So this is the sleeve. It sort of finishes just above my wrist. Um, it's really loose and billowy. I can roll them up if I want to. Um, I quite like that length. It's quite nice. It's comfortable got elastic all the way around the neckline and that goes all the way around the back um, you can wear it off your shoulder excuse my bra straps um, but I want to be able to wear a bra so I wear it just up and it does cover my bra straps you can see around the back it covers bra straps too you've got this elastic channel across the tummy and it creates this gorgeous like billowy effect on top and then the trousers are really quite loose as well which is great and then it's got pockets and then also really deep pockets actually you can see my hands go all the way down there um and then the legs the trouser legs are really wide and just really squishy as well um and then they stop just at my ankle it's going to be really difficult to show you but it stops just at my ankle i love this print i think it's so fun with all the leaf print and flowers all over it just think it's gorgeous it's a really fun like summery jumpsuit um, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, so this is what the model looks like on the front and you get an idea of what it looks like. But I will put images in of me wearing this as well, just so you can see what it looks like. It's really lovely. The um, sleeve, as you can see here, it's meant to be quite loose. So you can see on my wrist, it is quite loose. It's not really stuck to my wrist, which makes it really comfortable. The instructions, as usual, really hold your hand. And there are lots and lots of images to guide you through as well, which is great. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really pleased with the Avenir jumpsuit and I'll definitely make some more of them too. Um, so on to, I think I've got three more things to show you. So I'm going to get changed into the next outfit, which is a dress. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've got changed into my next make, which is a variation on a Tilly and the Buttons pattern. So I used the Tilly and the Buttons Lotta pattern to make this dress. 
but I've made some amendments to the pattern, which I'll talk about in a second. So I got this fabric from a So Hayley Jane box, and I really love the summery vibes that you get from this, this fabric. So it's a double gauze, which is not my favourite fabric to work with, but I do really love the, the lightness of the colour because it's a white background. And then it's got like these vines all over it and like branches and then all these gorgeous sort of leaves. I think they're leaves and flowers. Like there's light blues, there's dark blues, and then there's some yellow. I don't know if you can see, there's some yellow. So I did really love the print, but I wasn't too sure about the fabric. But I also know that double gauze is great for when it's really warm, so the summer months particularly, because it keeps you nice and cool. So I had a little think about some of the patterns I already had in my stash, and I thought I might as well use a fabric that is not my favourite fabric to work with to try out a hack that I've wanted to try for a while. And the hack um, was using the Tilly in the Buttons Lotta pattern. So I wanted to use the bodice, which is this sort of loose fitting bodice. I don't know if you can see that actually there, a loose fitting bodice. Um, but with the Lotta, it's got this elastic channel across the tummy. I wanted to get rid of the elastic channel and just attach a gathered skirt because I also wanted to put pockets in. Now with the Lotta pattern, you can't add pockets, inseam pockets because of the style of the skirt, but you can put patch pockets on. Um, but I didn't want to put patch pockets on. So I wanted to use the bodice of the Lotta and then just add a gathered skirt. And then I've got some waist ties because I knew that that would be quite roomy. So I wanted some waist ties so that I had the option to sort of bring it in and add a little bit of shaping. And I'm really pleased with how it's turned out actually. So if I stand up, so I've got this lovely, just simple gathered skirt um, and then it has got pockets. If I just put my hands in, you'll be able to see, it's got pockets. And then I've just got these waist ties here, just into the side seams because if I move that chair, you'll be able to see it is really roomy, which actually is perfect for when it's a really hot day. But you can see that there's a lot of room in it. So that's great because it makes the dress quite swishy and it's going to keep me really cool. But I wanted to have the option to be able to add a little bit of shaping. So um, there are the white waist ties and I just pull it around the back, but not really, really tight because I still want to be quite, quite loose. And then just bring it around the front and then fasten it into a little bow because I do love a little bow. Um, and then, yeah, I've got the pockets. The bodice is exactly what I wanted, so you've just got a facing here, exactly the same bodice, I didn't make any adjustments to it at all, apart from I just didn't add the waist, the, the elastic casing across the waist. It's got grown on sleeves, um, and then just this lovely neckline, and you can see around the back that's what it looks like too. So I'm really pleased, I've got quite a basic um, dress that I can wear over the summer, and I've used this gorgeous double gauze. Now, one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of sewing with double gauze is I find it stretches out of place. Um, and I made a dress where the fabric just seemed to grow. So I measured myself. I was quite careful with my cutting out, really careful with sewing. But I just felt like each time I tried on that dress throughout the various stages of sewing it, it just seemed to grow. So I was a bit worried about that, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to use this fabric to make quite a loose fitting dress because if it did grow ever so slightly, it didn't matter too much. Um, and it still feels really lovely and roomy, and I think it'll be really lovely and lightweight too. Um, I tend to spill things all over me, so I wouldn't wear this to work, um, but I would wear it probably on my summer holidays when we get to go away, um, or if it's a really hot day in the summer too. But I will have to be really careful because I tend to spill things down myself all of the time. Um, so I'm really pleased with this hack and it just used um, the bodice block for the Lotta um, and then I just added a really simple gathered skirt and I just cut two long, uh, two large rectangles and I measured from the bottom of the bodice to where I wanted the skirt to finish and this finishes, um, if I stand up, it just finishes at my knee which is exactly where I wanted it to finish. Um, so yeah, I just used a tape measure and I measured from where I knew that the bodice block would finish um, down to where I wanted the skirt to finish and just added a little bit on for the seam allowance but also um, to allow myself to be able to hem the skirt as well and then just added waist ties in. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, I think it's a really lovely summery sort of lightweight dress um, that I should hopefully get lots and lots of wear out of. Hopefully, if I don't spill anything on it, that's going to stain. So I've got two more things to show you. One is a T-shirt 
and then one is trousers. So I'm going to put them on together and then I can just talk about both of the patterns together. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've got changed into the last two things that I wanted to talk about. Before I go on to talk about the last two things, I forgot to say about the lot address. Um, so it comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 24. Um, so for UK 6, it's a bust measurement 30 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and hip measurement 33 inches. And then for a UK 24, it's a 48 inch bust, 42 inch waist and a 51 inch hip. Um, they recommend light to medium weight drapey fabrics like a chambray, a viscose, a tensile. They do recommend double gauze actually, um, brushed cotton or crepe. And the short sleeve version can also be made in a less drapey fabric like a linen or a cotton lawn or a seersucker. Um, you can also use this pattern to sew with knit fabrics too. So like a single knit drapey jersey, stretch velvet or lightweight French terry. Um, it comes in two different skirt options and two different sleeve lengths um, so it comes in knee length I don't know if you're gonna be able to see with patch pockets if you want to add to them or you can do midi length um, and again with patch pockets um, if you are sewing the jersey dress I think you have like a neck band um, so if you're sewing the jersey one it's got a neck band that you attach like you would with a t-shirt like I've done here um, but if you're sewing the woven, then you add a facing, which looks like this. Um, it is designed for, um, it's a sewing pattern for beginners. And I would say it's really straightforward um, because there's not a huge amount of fitting involved. It is meant to be quite loose and blousy on top. And you've got that lovely volume from the skirt too. The only fiddly bits are attaching the neckband and the facing. But if you understitch the facing and then really press it, then it should sit really nice and flat. And then the neckband, if you just take your time and use lots of pins or clips, then it should go in really nicely. Um, I really love the Lotta. I've sewn up quite a few versions. I've sewn up jersey, but also a woven version. And I love both of them. The instructions, as you would expect with Tilly and the Buttons, are really clear and hold your hand. And you've got really lovely clear images as well to help you along the way. Um, so I would highly recommend the Lotta. Hopefully they will bring it out in their extended size range because um, I think they're working back with all of the other patterns, hopefully, um, to bring them out in the extended size range because it is a really great pattern and I absolutely love it. It's super comfortable to wear too. Um, and I'm really pleased actually with the hack. So I just used the bodice and then just added a gathered skirt on there so that I could pop in seam pockets. Um, so I just thought I'd let you know the size range and the fabric recommendations for that pattern. So on to my final two makes and they actually go really nicely together and prior to filming this video I hadn't actually tried them together but they work really well. So this is the Tabitha t-shirt from Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book which I'll share in a minute and then I've just got it on with some lilac um, needle cord so it's like a fine needle cord fabric that I got from I think I've got this from Pound Fabrics um, and this is the Nina Lee Portobello trousers. Um, I've made them really wide legged as the pattern suggests. They've got inseam pockets, which I love, and there's a couple of adjustments that I made to the Portobello trousers because I made them in a needle cord, and I'll talk about that when I get on to that pattern. So let's start with the t shirt. This fabric is from Hayso Sister, and I think they've still got some in stock. It's so amazing, it's like a retro rainbow stripe, and it's got all these wibbly wobbly stripes. They were a pain to pattern match because they're all different widths so I tried my best with pattern matching and I was fairly successful but you can see like this one here is ever so slightly out um, because of the width of the stripes but yeah I tried my best with matching wibbly wobbly um, stripes it's really fun I've worn it to work loads the children love it because of the bright colours but I just wanted a really simple, straightforward t-shirt. So I used the Tabitha t-shirt, which is from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. Um, so if I find the pattern, there's Tilly wearing hers. Um, I just wanted a really simple, it's fair, I mean, it's quite fitted across the bust actually, but it is quite loose. It's not like really, you know, skin tight. I didn't want a skin tight t-shirt. I wanted to have a little bit of room in it. So I opted for the Tabitha t-shirt pattern, which is from this book. I'm just gonna find the pattern. Um, and within this book, you can also use the t-shirt to make a dress, which I have done before, a drawstring dress. 
So it's this pattern, the Tabitha T-shirt, and there's the lovely model. Um, and then these are the line drawings. So you've got a short sleeve option, which is what I've gone for. And then you've got, I think that's like elbow length T-shirt, um, sleeve length, and then you've got full length. It's a really straightforward T-shirt with a neck band here. Um, and then you just turn up at the bottom and turn up on the sleeves. Um, really straightforward to sew, it doesn't take long really. Um, they suggest that the cutting time is about 30 minutes and sewing time an hour and a half. I can whip one of these up in about an hour really. Tend to sew it on my overlocker and then just top stitch the neck band and then hem the sleeves and the bottom. Um, in terms of sizes, it comes in UK 6 to UK 24. So for a UK 6, it's a bust measurement 30 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and then hip measurement 32 inches. And then for a UK 24, it's a 48 inch bust measurement, 42 inch waist measurement and 51 inch hip measurement. In terms of fabric suggestions, they recommend light to medium weight knit fabrics with at least 10% crosswise stretch, like a jersey, interlock, stretch velvet, lightweight French terry or sweater knit. And then you can use the ribbing for the neck band if you're worried about it not being able to stretch over your head. This is a cotton jersey and it's stretched really nicely over my head and it's got really good recovery as a fabric too. Um, it's really fun, it really makes me smile and I'm really pleased that I've got a lovely simple t-shirt um, to add to my wardrobe. And then today I've got them paired with my Nina Lee Portobello trousers, which was a little bit of a hack of the pattern. So I followed the instructions um, per pattern, um, but I had to make some adjustments because I've wanted to make some needle cord trousers for ages. I know that high-waisted is a, a pattern um, design that is comfortable for me, especially around my tummy area. And I love the Nina Lee Portobello trousers. So I thought I'd use those as my base and just try and sew them up and see how I got on. Now this needle cord, because I bought it online, I didn't realise it had stretch in it. And you'll be able to see, if I stand up, you might be able to see, it's got a little bit, not a huge amount, but there's a little bit of stretch, which was something else that I also needed to take into consideration. So this is the Portobello trouser pattern. Um, so they're described as a simple, elegant and oh so flattering high-waisted trousers that are fairly straightforward to sew up and they work in a variety of fabrics for year-round comfort. So make them in a lightweight wool, you're ready, um, you'll work ready in the winter. Linens and rayons will keep you cool and effortlessly chic in the summer. They're constructed with front pleats and back darts and then there's a centre back concealed zip. Um, along with inseam pockets. So I had to make some adjustments. It comes in sizes UK 6 to 20. So for a UK 6, it's a 32 inch bust, 24 inch waist and a 33.5 inch hip. And then for UK 20, it's a 46 inch bust, 38 inch waist and 47 and a half inch hip measurement. I normally make a eight because I go off my waist and hip measurements because that's really where it's going to be fitting. Um, my waist measurement is a 27 inch, but normally I sew up an 8, which um, is a 34 inch bust measurement, 26 inch waist measurement and 35 and a half inch hip measurement. And they normally fit me really well. Um, the suggestions within the pattern um, from Nina, what she says when you're choosing your style is start, start with the waist measurement as this is the only area that the trousers should fit snugly. And the trousers have a wide legged fit, allowing for plenty of ease across the hips. I went with my waist measurement because I also looked at the finished garment measurements. So for a size eight, the finished garment measurements, it's a 27 inch waist um, and a 45 inch hip. So there is a lot of ease around your hips. Now, because the needle cord had ever so slight stretch to it, I sized down first of all, because I thought that they may come up ever so slightly too big because of that stretch. So I went with a size six. Um, which is a 32 inch bust, 24 inch waist, so a good three inches smaller than what my um, waist measurement actually is, and then 33 and a half inch hip. I'm really glad that I sized down because they did end up still being ever so slightly too big, so I ended up taking even more out of the um, side seam. So I just basted them. When I'd constructed the trousers, I basted them before I put the waistband on and I tried them on, and then I just took out. I think I took out another inch out of each um, sort of side when I put the trousers on because they are supposed to fit quite snugly. Um, the stretch content of the needle cord means that they are still a little bit roomy, but that, that's comfortable, especially when I'm tucking things in. 
and then what I also chose to change was I was worried about the needle cord being too bulky here because you've got a couple of normally you've got um pleats and the pleats sit ever so slightly out um, and that caused it made them look really bulky here so I did first of all try them with pleats but then I decided I didn't like the pleats so I ended up just putting darts in and they also helped with fitting across this area and then I've just got the darts in the back as well you finish the waistband with a button and then we've got the invisible zip that runs down as well and then I also decided to do contrast pockets so I just used used fat quarters that I got from a Sir Haley Jane box and I love these I love that pop of colour in the pocket you don't see that because they're um understitched when you put the pockets in and then we've got pockets on this side too which I absolutely love they just really make me smile so I had to make a couple of adjustments to the pattern just because of the fabric that I was using but overall I'm really delighted that I've got a pair of needle cord trousers it's too warm to wear them at the moment but they're going to be part of my winter wardrobe um, and again, that was just an experiment that I wanted to try out to see if it was possible to use needle cord um, to make the portobello trousers. And I would say it is possible, but there were a few tweaks, like putting the darts in the front instead of the pleats. And that just reduced the bulk across my tummy area. And then I've got the darts in the back too. And then my little pockets. And I kept the length the same, and um, because I'll probably end up wearing these with boots. And then I've kept the width the same as well. So they do, they have got a bit of structure to them because of the needle cord. Um, but I'm really pleased with them. I think they're gorgeous and they're going to go with quite a lot of things that I've got in my wardrobe. So I'm really delighted. So that is a roundup of everything that I got sewn up in June. So lots of lovely dresses and a couple of practical garments for my autumn winter wardrobe. Um, a few new patterns to me as well this month, which were a really fun thing to sew up. Let me know in the comments below which one of the garments I got sewn up in June was your favourite. Um, it's quite hard for me to decide which was my favourite. I really loved the Yanta overalls. I also really loved these portobello trousers just because they were an experiment and they actually turned out really well. But I'd be interested to see what was your favourite. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do hit that subscribe button because I'll be bringing out some more videos very soon. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.